This video is one of the videos from a course entitled MBTI Learning Styles, a Practical Approach for Educators, Parents, and Learners. This course is available on Udemy, Teachable, and Thinkific. If you're interested in just the book, which is also part of this course, you can find it on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle versions. So we've made it through. We're down to our final pair of the MBTI type indicator. And this one is how one deals with the outside world. That means their environment, right? So you have judging and you have perceiving. So judges are really based on that structure and routine. They like to know what's expected of them at all times. Let's look where judges are. Do you see the judges? Judges are on the top. They like to see what's possible. They like to plan for the future. They want to be able to see what's going on. They want to be able to observe. They like that very decided lifestyle and do not do well with change. I like that they talk also about it's our orientation to the outside world. Your orientation. How does your world impose upon you? Do you want it to be orderly or are you quick to action? Let's look at judging versus perceiving. Now remember, this is the relationship of the outside world or your environment upon you. So judges are 54% of the total population versus perceivers who are only 45%. What is the key word? overachieving learner. So as you can imagine, an overachieving learner, this is going to be that student that excels in a traditional classroom. This is going to be that learner that all teachers want in their classroom because they're just easy. So what is the question though? How does this create order in my life? It's how can you use it and how can you create order? How can you do some planning? How can it really benefit you and aid. That's the major thing that they're looking at. So the learning style. We're taking now all of these things and let's put it into a concise paragraph or two and let's concisely discuss what it means. So our judges focus on rules and order. That's most important to them. So they need organization. So if you were to build a house for a judger, the very bottom foundation is rules, orders, organization, routine. That's what they want. They are self-regimented. They are task-oriented. These are the people that walk around with their planners, right? Because they've already created a very intricate and difficult and structured study plan and they're going to you know do it no matter what but they also have to avoid emergencies so one assignment will be completed completely before they will even start another if they have too many deadlines they're really really going to be overwhelmed however why is that? It's because those deadlines are really sacred to the judges. They cannot be late, absolutely cannot be late. So as soon as a judger gets an assignment, they're gonna be very quickly run out the door and they're gonna start taking action on it right away. They want it done. These are not procrastinators, absolutely not. Now remember that judges are going to answer the question based on their current knowledge. Ah, so what happens if they don't have the knowledge they need to be able to answer the question. Well, that's part of the difficult piece for judges. They're going to need to acquire more knowledge in order to tie up those loose ends. A cognitive environment. Can you imagine what it's going to look like for a judger? A cognitive environment for a judger is exactly what you see in the picture. Order, control, tradition. Easy, right? And it is easy for the instructor who likes that kind of classroom. They need those objectives. They need those rubrics. Those things are essential to their learning process. And since they don't like surprises, they need detailed instructions. They do not want anything to derail their learning process. Again, structure, right? Now, if they can participate in a group atmosphere if they need to, or a more interactive atmosphere, but they would need to have some highly specified guidelines so that they can create efficiency and order as required. For teachers, what does this mean? Wow, 
This means that you need to give some firm deadlines. Now, judges, there's one thing that's going to drive them insane, and that's when you give a firm deadline, but then you have that one procrastinator on the side and you decide to change the deadline to meet the needs of the procrastinator. It's going to really infuriate your judger. So also remember, don't put excessive deadlines on top of each other. It's just going to absolutely frustrate this learner and completely upset their entire learning process. So you want to scatter them out just a little bit further. So you may want to say we have a project due and a test, but let's not put them on the same day. Having them on the same day would really absolutely exasperate a judger. Use your Bloom's taxonomy to discover and to develop your objectives. Bloom's taxonomy is very, very essential, and it is a great resource for this kind of learner. So you want to encourage planning. Not only do you want to encourage planning, but be sure that you provide time during class for your judges to plan. Make sure that they have the ability and the resources they need to complete the assignments. That also means giving them the information knowledge they need to fill in their information gap between what they know and what they need to know in order to complete any assignments. Allow them ample opportunity to ask questions about any assignments and expectations. Don't just rush off and say, class is over, bell is rung, out the door make sure you have question time for them. If you have run out of time for them to ask questions about assignments or expectations, be sure that you give them an opportunity to meet with you. Maybe that's office hours or your contact information. Give them an opportunity as well to create a classroom environment through discussing of rules and expectations and empower them that they are part of the solution, that they're important enough that you want their in, um, input. Again, avoid surprises. That is just the most important thing <laughs> of anything for judges. You surprise them and you've lost them. No surprises. Stick to traditional teaching. Now, also, this learner is going to feel most fulfilled when things are done correctly. What does that mean, done correctly? Done correctly is whatever they have built in their mind and what they have envisioned as being done correctly. That's going to be no errors no surprises, uh, do not change your deadlines, things like that. Those are ways in which things need to be done correctly for this type of a learner. What if you are a judger? How can you use these things and use your judging preference as you approach your world to really be a strength in learning? First and foremost is remember that planning. Always, always, always planning. Be sure that you recognize that you need decisiveness. Ask questions. Make sure you understand everything, exactly what is needed. And if necessary, even say, excuse me, is there a rubric for this? Can you please give me the rubric? How will I be graded on that? Be sure to start early on your assignments so that you can get the required work completed. And create a task list or a calendar of due dates as needed. There are some great options out there like Gantt charts that are great, wonderful, and most efficient. Use such things as Cornell Notes to help you in note taking, and also create a list of questions. Before you walk into a learning situation, you want to sit down and say, this class is going to be on how to set goals. What are questions that might be related to that? And approach that as an independent learning situation. You want to be able to say that you are empowered with what you need. If you are stuck in a situation where you might have to be working with a group or a partner, be sure that you set up all of the expectations and the roles, the guidelines, and the tasks that each of those people are going to need to complete. More than anything is just be patient. Be patient with other learners. Not everybody is going to be a wonderful learner like you are that really needs to have everything organized, right? So when I say a wonderful learner like you are, that's because as a judger, you feel that you are the best kind of learner and you want to make sure that you don't demean those that are around you, which would damage your relationships. Be sure to also take time to really investigate and learn what is it that helps you to learn best.